So I think, uh, at least the way that I treat most of the children with arthritic gryposis, that at some point in time they will need surgery. Uh, and many of them will require more than one surgery. Uh, the important thing is to realize what needs to have surgery and what we might be able to find a different way. Uh, and what things we can treat with a minor surgery and what things we need to treat with a bigger surgery. And on top of that, what is the goal of surgery? Um, if we have someone who, uh, at four years of age, is not showing that they can uh, roll over or they can't get up on their knees, then maybe we don't need to straighten their knees out all the way. Maybe we don't have to do a very big operation on them. We just need to try to get them in a good position for sitting. Um, whereas if we have a child who is showing good control and good strength of their legs, uh, then we want to go all out and help this child get up to a, to a walking uh, position. Um, so I think with that in mind, we don't look at surgery as something to be entirely avoided that it is a way of reaching our goal of making this child as optimal as possible. Um, so I ultimate, ultimately try to uh, get families comfortable with the idea that a surgery is not an evil. It's a way of achieving a, a goal. And that goal is to make their child uh, as, uh, as functional in society and as happy as possible. You want to do everything as early as possible. Well, there's, there's too early, too. For example, uh, one of my favorite patients uh, was doing so well with his feet and with his hips uh, that I thought I could move right forward and I could do something about his knees. And we were all very excited about how he was able to, to stand on his knees. And I thought, well, if we straighten his knees out, I can get him up and standing. And so rather than waiting until four years of age, I started addressing his knees uh, uh, a year or two earlier than I usually would. Um, and I think that made it all harder for all of us, particularly the patient. Um, and so now what I, I do is I just stick to that and say, well, at four years of age is when I'll start to look at the knees, because I think that's when it works out better from a biology standpoint, when it works out better from uh, an emotional standpoint, and from the ability of the child to cooperate with therapies afterwards. Uh, now, if the child comes to me when they're six or seven years of age and we think about straightening out the knees at that time, is that a bad time? I don't think it's a bad time, but you say, well, if we got into it three years sooner, what would have happened? You know, would, would that child not be much further along uh, in what they can do walking-wise or socializing or, or those kinds of things? Um, so I don't want anybody to think that there's this window that closes down. I and mean, we've seen that with the club feet. We get plenty of children, uh, particularly those who are now adopted from other countries that have had surgery on their club feet. And the club feet have come back again. Uh, and we've still been able to cast those kids out. And we say, well, that's not a window that's closed on us. We still have the ability to treat them. But uh, would they have been better off if we did that when they were babies? Well, arguably, yeah. They would have been that much further along what they could do. So the Ponsetti technique uh, is named after Dr. Ignacio Ponsetti uh, from Iowa City. He unfortunately uh, well, he passed away a couple years ago and passed away in his 90s. So he had a really wonderful life. And actually, if you look at him, he had a few careers. Um, but Dr. Ponsetti started casting feet uh, way back in the 50s, 1950s, um, and had some good results and just wasn't able to get as much attention uh, nationwide or worldwide uh, as he deserved. Um, a number of different reasons for that, but he had a core group of adherents uh, in Iowa uh, that were practicing his technique. And then in the 1990s, uh, he again, retired twice in between, came back, and he wrote his textbook on arthrogryposis. And around that time, he and his colleagues in Iowa started also publishing some follow-up papers, and they had you know, 35 years follow-up, which in pediatric orthopedics is, uh, you know, that's golden. That's, we don't get that very often. We get five or 10 years of follow-up at best. So he had these papers showing great follow-up on these kids, and that's really when people started paying more attention to him. Um, and it's now, developed uh, into something that is done not only nationwide, uh, but I would say worldwide. There's a, a number of projects trying to teach the Ponsetti method um, across the world because it is an easy uh, to perform technique and it's low cost. So a great thing to do again in countries that are not as, as lucky as ours. Um, but the technique is changing casts on, on babies about every week or so. So you slowly 
uh, massage out the foot and, and reduce the position that the foot's been in. Uh, what Dr. Ponsetti realizes is that a club foot is just an extreme of normal foot motion. Uh, most of us can turn our feet inwards and outwards, and if you take your foot and you turn it inwards and then you go a fair amount past that, now you got yourself a club foot. And he said, well, gosh, if you can turn it this way, you can probably do the same by just slowly pushing it out the other way and getting it back to where it needs to be. Um, it, most pediatric orthopedists were used to casting feet before doing the club foot surgery, so that wasn't a whole big difference. Uh, the nice difference is, though, that after you've finished your casting, the procedure you need to do is a small office procedure, a little nick in the Achilles tendon uh, that we don't even put kids to sleep for here, uh, so we can save them having to starve themselves before going to the operating room and being sick from the anesthesia afterwards. Just a five minute thing that we can do. Um, and then it's a matter of bracing them for a period of time. Kids with uh, arthrogryposis have a more difficult club foot than uh, kids who don't have arthrogryposis. Um, and so we have a lot more recurrences that we brace them for a while, the foot kind of comes in again and oftentimes you have to recast them and maybe do another set of recasting. But if we look at the short-term goal of keeping a baby out of the operating room for their feet, it is very successful with that. Since I started doing the Ponsetti method um, more than 10 years ago now, I have not operated on any of the arthrogripotic club feet in a baby. Sometimes in the older ages, we have to do a little nipping and tucking to get the foot in a good position. But having a foot that's flat to the ground that you can put in a brace that a child can walk on that's a, that is a goal that you can reach with the Ponsetti method, and we keep them out of the operating room. Now, what's important about that, if we could get a great result operating on a foot um, at an early age where you'd never have to worry about that foot again and the foot functioned well, uh, then I think there'd be a bigger argument against the Ponsetti method. But the literature shows that uh, three quarters of feet, three quarters of uh, arthrogripotic feet that have been operated on need recurrent surgeries. And every time the surgery gets more and more intense, and at some point in time, people start taking out pieces of bone. They don't know what else to do. And so you're left with a very short, stiff, scarred foot, um, and it just doesn't function very well. Can mothers... I'm, uh, I'm flattered and honored that we have people who will make the trip um, as far as the places you talked about, from South America, uh, from Hawaii, from Europe, um, but also we have people who make uh, you know, long trips from uh, the Carolinas, uh, from New York. Um, you know, does it matter if you, you, you fly a number of hours or you drive a number of hours? Uh, and then I also have a lot of very special kids who are right in this neighborhood here that I feel really lucky to have because uh, sometimes it's very difficult to take care of the ones at a distance, so it's nice also to have the ones that you got a problem coming today so I can take a look at you.